Hey guys, Miles Somerville here with XDA TV, and today we're going to be checking out one of the more interesting ROMs I've gotten to review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Hydrogen OS on the OnePlus 3. So just in case you don't already know, Hydrogen OS is the ROM made by OnePlus for Chinese variants of their phones. The overall system UI and layout of this ROM is very different from Oxygen OS. The default launcher is pretty minimalistic and at the same time very customizable. If you long press the clock portion of the home screen, it'll bring you to the launcher settings where you can change the wallpaper, you can choose a background color, and edit the clock style. This launcher also has no dedicated app drawer button. You have 9 primary apps on the front page, and then you swipe right to access the rest of your apps. Going over the UI, the first major thing I notice is that there actually isn't a quick settings menu at the top. You access all of your quick settings from swiping from the bottom of the screen. So when you pull down on the status bar, all you'll see is the clock and any notifications you have. Another thing you'll see is that basically all of the icons for stuff is completely different from stock. All of the stock apps like Calendar, Browser, and the clock are all redesigned. Basically the only app that's the same in Oxygen OS is the camera app. Going into the settings in Hydrogen, you'll find that a lot of things are rearranged, and there are a handful of features in this ROM that you won't find in Oxygen OS. When you go into the sound settings, all the way at the bottom there's something called the earphone settings. Here you have a switch to enable them, and you have four modes, and this is to choose between different sound profiles. In the display settings, you have a few new things, the first one being read mode, where it reduces the background glare to improve the reading experience. There's also a slider below to adjust the strength of it. There's also a temperature control slider to give the display a warmer or cooler look. Now this isn't really a feature, but one thing that Hydrogen doesn't allow you to do is choose how many digits you want for a pin code. You're stuck to only four digits. Hydrogen includes a menu for managing app notifications as well, so you can make certain apps able to wake the display when it notifies you. And just in case you're wondering why you can't find the unknown sources toggle, it's because it's in the apps and permissions menu and not in the security menu like it usually is. The IQ settings is where you'll find all of your customizations for buttons as well as the quick gestures. They even allow you to have a scheduled time for the device turning on and off, so if you set the device to turn off at 3pm, it'll shut down at 3pm. It's a pretty cool feature. There are a couple of cool things that I noticed with this UI, and the first one being that there's a different UI for what pops up when you choose different modes on the alert slider. Another interesting one is that there really isn't a power menu to access when you hold down the power button. There's just a power off option and you slide it down to power off the phone. There's also a cool little animation you get on the lock screen when plugging in the charging cable. Now one thing to note is that multiple people on the forums have been unable to get gaps working on this ROM. So the way I installed it was download all three files from the forum thread, then I installed it in the order of the ROM, the debloater, and then the Pico gaps, and make sure to wipe the cache after you install all three zips. So if you want to test this ROM out for yourself, there will be links in the description down below. Make sure to subscribe for future content like this, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.